Welcome to John Redmond, Power of Attorney, the show that aims to empower you through knowledge of the law. I'm attorney John Redmond. As part of our ongoing series covering the November 4th Louisiana elections, we're going to visit with the two candidates running for Division D of Civil District Court in New Orleans. Civil District Court, or CDC, handles lawsuits where large amounts of money may be at stake, among other types of civil cases. The candidates are Judge Lloyd Medley, the incumbent who has been on the bench for 18 years. He is challenged by Nakisha Irvin Knott, an experienced attorney who is currently with the civil litigation firm Gainsburg Benjamin. As with all our forums, our goal today is to have a cordial, productive conversation that lets the voting public get to know the candidates, their ideas, and the issues themselves. Coming up next, we begin our forum with the candidates, Judge Lloyd Medley and attorney Nakisha Irvin Knott. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the show. On Tuesday, November 4th, today's guest will face off in an election to serve as judge of Division D at Civil District Court in New Orleans. Judge Medley and Nakisha Urban Knott are with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, uh, as part of our ongoing series, uh, we, we start our questions with the incumbent in this election. Um, uh, judge Medley, uh, why don't we ask you to define the role of a judge as you see it and why you think you are best qualified to continue on as judge in uh, Division D at Civil District Court. Well, good morning, John, and thank you for inviting me on your show. I think the role of a judge is that of a decision maker. I think the hardest thing about being a judge is actually making the call. I think I'm the most qualified because I've been doing it for 18 years. During that 18 years, I've handled all variety of cases. I've done it successfully, and I've really had no complaints. Now, I will admit, Every day, two people walk into my court and one walks out unhappy. But that's the nature of what we do. We're decision makers, and that's what we do. Thank you. Nakisha, why don't you tell us uh, your view of what the role of a judge is and why you believe you're best qualified to uh, be elected judge. Thank you, John, <clears throat> and thank you for having me. Uh, my experience, my skill set, my energy, my experience has spanned over 16 years on both the plaintiff and defense side. I have handled cases on behalf of corporations and businesses and health care providers in the arenas of family law. I've also handled cases on behalf of individuals and families and victims of medical malpractice as well as class action litigation. My experience, my energy, my ability to move a docket, to move cases, I think that's what all litigants want, that's what all attorneys want. So that, I believe, best qualifies me to serve as judge of Division D. Okay. Next question is for you, Nikisha. Uh, what do you believe is the most pressing issue facing Civil District Court or CDC today? I think the most press pressing issue facing uh, the court is the lack of efficiency. You know, what I hear most often from the attorneys and people that I go before, they say they want a court that's going to be efficient, they want a docket that's going to be moved, they just want justice, they want their day in court. So when you're looking at attorneys, uh, you're looking at litigants, whether they're represented or not, they just want justice, they want their day in court. So that's the most pressing issue that I find that's facing. Uh, Judge Madley, same question for you. What do you see as the most pressing issue facing civil district court today? Well, I don't know if I would call it an issue. I think the most pressing need for the court today is a brand new building. The court itself, you know, the, the judges we have, it runs well. They move their dockets, I move my docket. But I think that the building we have is outdated, unhealthy, space deprived, and generally just obsolete. I think if we had a brand new building, like most of the jurisdictions in our region, I think we could provide better conditions. I think we, we could provide a better brand of justice because I think we have an updated building, more technology, and I think we could better serve the public, which is what we want to do. Okay. Next question, we, we begin with you, Judge. Um, what improvements, in particular technological uh, and otherwise, would you like to see implemented at Civil District Court? And that may relate to what you were just saying. but answer that question. Well, I think that what I'd like to see is what a lot of the other courts around the jurisdictions have. I would like us to see, see us come into the 22nd or 21st century, really have more technology, have more computers, uh, have an updated computer system. We just moved 
not too many years ago from the Wang system to a Microsoft system, which really has been wonderful. Uh, in other jurisdictions and around the country, our lawyers appear through Skype. And I think that we still operate with large mountains of paper. I'd like to see us go paperless. Now, it's going to be a job because we have to involve the clerk and uh, the other stakeholders in the building who all want to get on board and all, all want to do it. But I think if we can improve our technology, uh, put more things, go paperless more, I think we could do better for the public. Okay. Nikisha, for you, uh, same question. What improvements, in, uh, in particular technological and other types of improvements, would you like to see implemented at Civil District Court? One of the things that's been happening, fortunately, is, as it relates to the technology, is the clerk's office over the last couple of years, they have scanned thousands of documents. They have scanned millions of motions and pleadings. So one of the things that the clerk's office along with the IT department and they're getting ready to go live, they have made those strides. The changes that you're talking about, those are in place and they're getting ready to go live. So that's fortunate for the community. It's fortunate for the lawyers that are before. Now, of course, the funds are limited. And when you look at the facade and the, the new courthouse, that's something that's needed, but it has to be a judicious expense expenditure. It has to be something that's made on a judicious basis. Uh, but the technology, it's there and it's fortunate that we have a committee that's getting ready to go live with that. Okay. And you touched on well, what's going to be the next question and it's for you, Nikisha. How would you make best use of the court's limited funds? Right. Um, one of the things that as I said, is being implemented or uh, the documents going live. So I think the committee, the en banc, uh, the clerk of court, as well as uh, the committee that's been in place to do those things, they have done, I believe, a good job. Uh, when you talk about a new courthouse, unfortunately, the funds that are coming in are not enough to cover a new courthouse. And for me, I know a courthouse is, is needed, and not just for the judges, not for, uh, it's for the community, it's for the jurors. You know, when you talk about having jury trials and issues that come before the court, it's the community that suffers from that. You know, you, you, um, there are people who are handicapped, who are disabled, who are not able to access the building in a way that's accessible because, unfortunately, on any given day, the elevators may not be working. So that becomes an impediment when you're talking about the access to the individuals who use a courthouse on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, Judge Medley, same question. How would you make best use of those limited courthouse funds? Well, I think that the judges right now have put together a building, uh, a building committee. They've identified a site on Canal Street, and right now we're in the process of negotiations with different professional service providers that if we are successful with these negotiations, we could probably have a building within two years. We're that close. I think um, it's not as correct. The funds that are currently available are inadequate. But I think that one of the things we're in negotiations with about is a, a financial partner that will help us achieve that goal. I think once we achieve the goal, I think the money will be there to get a new courthouse. And once you get a new courthouse, you can create infrastructure that will support the technology. And I think the funds will be better used that way. And I do think that once we do all of that, we can serve the public, serve the community, which is our goal. Okay. Um, next question is for you. Uh, and, and for our viewers, uh, Ms. Urban not asked that I call her Nakisha and uh, 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 Judge Medley, we're calling you Judge Medley if that's, that's okay with you. Um, um, census data shows that New Orleans racial mix, uh, makeup has a growing Hispanic element. Mm -hmm. um, what would you do uh, in your courtroom to accommodate this uh, population shift? Well. We have, at Civil District Court right now, a self-help desk, meaning that if people come in, whether they be Hispanic or pro se litigants, the desk is there to assist them in any area they might not be briefed in as far as the law goes. In a pro se litigant for our viewers who might not know There's a Latin. litigant without a lawyer. <laughs> okay. Okay. I would expand or add another self-help desk. I think another thing we use, and I just finished a trial where we had an interpreter, I would uh, make more interpreters available because not only do we have a growing Hispanic population, but we have other nationalities that are coming. I just think that we have to add to the services and that, and there are ways that we can do that and we are doing it. 
because we're having more trials with people who are either pro se and Hispanic. So not only do they have a lawyer, but they may have a need to have help with language. Okay. Um, Nikisha, um, same question. Census data shows that New Orleans racial mix-up has a growing Hispanic element. Sure. What would you do in your courtroom to accommodate this population shift? Absolutely. You would make interpreters available. You're right, this area has a growing Hispanic population. I serve as the vice chair of ASI Federal Credit Union, and we recognize that there is a growing Hispanic population. And what we've done, you have to acclimate and adapt to the community. We have opened a Hispanic branch because we recognize that there is a population population of people that are coming to this area that are part of our community, are part of this area that need the services and they may not, they may be an impediment because of the language barriers. So no matter what forum, what venue you're in, you have to make those resources available so that everyone can receive access to justice. Next question is for you, Nikisha. Um, should judges use the, those taxpayer funds that, that pay your salaries and uh, for uh, traveling to uh, receive uh, education out of state, uh, uh, to learn the best legal and judicial practices, or should these trips be paid for uh, by the individual judge, or should that traveling not take place? Continuing. We're Continuing ahead, legal education, CLEs, are an integral part of what we do. Each year the legislature meets, laws have changed, therefore uh, education is a very important part of what we do as attorneys, what we do as judges, uh, what we do in the legal community. I believe the CLE programs are necessary. Now I also believe that you should be judicious in your travel. Obviously the funds that are made available, if they are allocated, you have to be judicious. I don't believe that you should spend the public's dime on extravagant um, excessities, uh, uh, excessive travels for um, uh, CLE. There are very good CLEs that happen in the state and those that are not in the state because I am a frequent lecturer of CLE uh, around the state as well as um, all over nationally and internationally but I believe you should be judicious and understand that the funds are limited and you need to do what's best not only for your personal education but what's best when you're using the public funds. Okay. Uh, same question for you, uh, Judge Medley. Should the judges uh, use taxpayer funds when traveling to get these CLEs, these continuing legal education courses uh, within legal education, to get uh, this up the updates in the law, uh, to get the best legal and judicial uh, practices uh, education, uh, or should the uh, trips be paid for by the individual judges out of their pockets? Um, how do you approach that? Well, I agree with Ms. Not. I think CLEs are important. I think that we should have CLEs on a regular basis. I think there are CLEs that are in state and out of state. I think the Supreme Court carefully monitors the funds that we use to go out of state. And uh, they do a good job of it. I think we ought to be mindful that even though the funds are, are self-generated, that uh, it's the public's dime either way you go. And we ought to be mindful and uh, responsible when we spend those funds. But I do think from time to time you're going to find CLEs that are out of state or in another parish that you may want to attend that are really important. I just think that we have to be responsible and mindful when we spend those dollars. Okay. We'll continue our judicial forum with Judge Lloyd Medley and Nikisha Urbanat in just a moment. Welcome back to the show. We're continuing our conversation with Judge Lloyd Medley and Nakisha Urban Knott, who are running for Civil District Court Judge in New Orleans on November 4th. Let's get back to our questions. Uh, this question is for Judge uh, Medley. Uh, one of the big problems facing Civil District Court is a crowded docket. Uh, that's the perception, anyway. What are your plans to try and streamline that process and, uh, and help people get their cases to trial uh, in a prompt and expeditious fashion? Well, I don't, I guess I dispute the fact that the dockets at CDC are crowded or overly crowded. I think we have heavy caseloads. I think all the judges do. I do. I think we've always moved our dockets to the use of pretrial orders, which you being a lawyer, John, you know what a pretrial order is for the public. It's an order that puts in place a trial date and then you set deadlines for the important issues that you have to resolve. 
We also used to use the use of uh, pretrial conferences where we meet with the lawyers on a regular basis to try to resolve issues. All the judges use it, I use it, and we move our dockets expeditiously. My docket right now is current, not crowded. We have trial dates available. If someone comes in, they can get a current trial date, whether it be bench or jury. Bench or jury means a trial with the judge as opposed to a trial with, with the, the jury. jury. Yeah. And uh, there are first settings available, second settings available, depending on what the lawyers want. So I think that we have heavy dockets. I don't think the dockets are crowded or overly crowded. I think the judges work very hard, myself included. And as long as you work consistently, the dockets move. And I don't get any complaints from lawyers about the dockets. Okay. All right. Uh, same question for you, Nikisha. Um, one of the big... Uh, problems, or at least the perception is that in civil district court uh, dockets are crowded. Uh, what are your plans to, uh, what, what plans would you have to streamline that process mm -hmm. and uh, try and help cases move faster than they are moving? Absolutely. What would you like to do? Perception is often reality in some cases. I think efficiency starts with the judge who presides over the docket. As the judge, I believe that you get in the courtroom and you get the parties before you, you get the lawyers before you. You don't relegate certain uh, duties to your staff, to the clerks, or to the minute clerk, but you get the parties before you and you figure out what needs to be done, be it setting hearings timely, setting trial dates timely, not just setting them, but adhering to the trial dates, actually trying those cases. Uh, I've learned from both plaintiff and defense side, as I've done for the, over the last 16 years, you need a goal line in place so that the docket can move. Set hard trial dates, try those cases if they can't be resolved, but efficiency starts with the judge who presides over the docket, so I'm willing to do that. Okay. Next question is for you, Nikisha. Sure. Do you believe that all citizens uh, have adequate access to legal help in our legal system, and if not, what can be done to provide um, better, wider access to justice? Unfortunately, everyone does not have the adequate uh, access because they don't have the resources. There are um, oftentimes litigants who are in court that are unrepresented, and we call those pro se plaintiffs. But uh, as right out of law school, I started working for um, the Legal Aid Bureau, where we handled matters on behalf of individuals who had limited or no funds. Unfortunately, the resources are not wide range so that uh, they are made available to everyone. What you can do, and as a judge, you cannot help anyone practice law, but there are uh, no lack in some um, entities that are available. Unfortunately, they're not as widespread as needed to be. And no lack, why don't you just... New Orleans Legal Aid Assistance. Unfortunately, that's not there. They don't have enough resources to help everyone. Everyone. Uh, what can I do as a judge? Obviously, cannot practice law for them, but there are judges around the state. Um, judge uh, Jay Zaney, for instance, who oversees um, the homeless program. He's a federal judge. Absolutely. He's a federal very judge. Very active in the community. Very active. Excellent and judge. I believe that as a judge, you can be very much involved and can help in those matters. Okay. Same question for you, Judge Medley. Do you believe that all citizens have adequate access to legal help in our legal system? And if not, what, what can be done to help provide better and wider access to justice? Well, I don't, I don't think all citizens have adequate access to justice. They have an absolute right to it. I think what we at the courts can do is try to make the limited resources we have more available. I mentioned earlier the help desk. One of the things we'd like to do is expand the help desk so that more people can come in who are pro se litigants or litigants without lawyers and get an understanding of what their rights are and how they can proceed. In addition, at, in, in the courtroom itself, we try to do everything we can to make it uh, conducive to litigants without lawyers to conduct the process. And all of the judges, myself included, bend over backwards to do that because we want these people to have access to the court process and to justice. Okay. Next question is for you, Judge Medley. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Those of us in the legal world, uh, we know that lawyers and judges often are faced with having to make uh, difficult, often controversial decisions. Can you describe a situation in which you undertook a controversial position uh, as an attorney or a judge where uh, that angered or offended people and explain uh, how you handled that? Well. I guess we undertake those kinds of decisions on a regular basis. Uh, civil district court is the, the court in the state that handles the largest volume of civil litigation. Uh, a lot of the cases are large money cases. 
A lot of the cases involved uh, civil rights or human rights. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, the hardest thing about being a judge is actually looking at the law, looking at the facts, and making the call. Someone is going to be angered at any time. But I think what lawyers want and what lawyers appreciate is a judge that doesn't, one, sit on the decision. He doesn't just take it under advisement and do nothing. They want a judge who's going to make the call. And I guess I can't cherry pick a, diff a certain case, but I've handled numerous cases which are difficult, which are controversial, which are sensitive. And uh, I've handled them, made the decision, and it went on through the process. I think lawyers appreciate that, and that's what they want. Okay. Uh, Nikisha, um, same question for you. Uh, we know that lawyers as well as judges often face uh, having to make difficult, controversial decisions. Um, please describe a situation in which you undertook a controversial position uh, as an attorney uh, that angered or offended people uh, and how you handled that. Sure. Uh, controversial is uh, one of the things as I do every day. I represent individuals and victims of medical malpractice. While I used to represent health care providers, I now am on the other side of that. So something that may have angered individuals, particularly the health care community, is if, is if I'm representing an individual who has been a victim of medical malpractice and we're seeking justice. So that may be one instance. Another instance may be uh, as immediate past president of the Independent Women's Organization, the largest democratic group in this city, we've taken on issues that we believe are important to the community but may not be possible popular. Medicaid expansion is one. That's an issue that we have fought for and continue to fight for because we believe everyone deserves a right to health care. Um, last question. Um, and we started with uh, Judge uh, Medley, but I'm gonna let you have the last word, so I'm going to ask the question to Judge Medley. Mm -hmm. um, please give us your, uh, your thoughts, uh, final thoughts, anything you'd like to add on uh, 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 for the viewers why uh, you believe uh, they should give you your vote in this election. Uh, anything about you, something you'd like to say that you haven't had the chance to say yet? Well, I've been serving now for 18 years. I served my country proudly in the military for six years. I've taught school uh, with special kids for five years. I care deeply about this community. Uh, one of the things I liked about being a judge is that I'm a public servant. I'm not a king. I enjoy public service. Uh, I served as a city attorney for 10 years in public service. I think I'm good at public service. I think I do a good job. Over the 18 years, I've had no complaints about my job. And uh, I believe that I should be reelected because I want to continue doing the kind of job the citizens of this state want from a judge. Nikisha. Um your, you get the final say. What, uh, what would you like to say to the viewers that uh, you haven't had a chance to say yet during this program that you'd like them to consider uh, sure. in making a decision as to whether or not to vote for you uh, for this important position as judge? Absolutely. I've been practicing for 16 years. I believe I've served this community and will continue to serve this community as well as um, representing individuals a part of this community. You often say, who knows us best? Who's in a better position to judge us? Something has happened in this race. Um, the New Orleans Bar Association is a survey of lawyers who, as you know, um, practice before this court, practice with me, practice in this, in this venue. It's unprecedented that they have decided, they have chosen me to best serve this division by a wide margin. These are individuals who practice in this court. And I think that speaks volumes, because those are our colleagues, those are those who practice in this court. I'm Nikisha Irvin Knott, I'm number 59 on the ballot, and I would love to have the vote in support of your viewers. Thank you. Thank you both so much for being here. You can learn more about the candidates on our website at johnredmondpoa.com. You can also learn where you need to go to vote, watch every episode of the show, and submit your legal questions. Uh, that we'll try to answer on the air. Special thanks to Mrs. Irvin Knott and Judge Medley. Good luck to both of you, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on John Redmond, Power of Attorney. And I'll show you